Hello, and welcome back to the Equipping Godly Women podcast, where we challenge, encourage, and equip Christian women to be all in in faith and family. Today, I am so excited because we are speaking with Allie Worthington, author of the brand new book, Standing Strong, A Woman's Guide to Overcoming Adversity and Living with Confidence. In today's interview, we are talking about how we can stand strong as courageous women of God, no matter what is going on in our lives around us. Whether that means we are walking through a really tough season right now where we need that strength and encouragement to make it through, or we sense that God is calling us to something big and exciting, but we're a little scared or nervous of what that might entail and if we are up for the job. Either way, if you are ready to be all in on everything that God has for you. This is an amazing book and a wonderful interview I know you will not want to miss. Will you start by telling us a little bit about your brand new book, Standing Strong? What made you want to write a book on this topic specifically? Well, it's actually a funny story. I didn't want to write a book on this topic at all. <laughs> With each of my books, I always pray and ask the Lord, what do you want me to talk about next? And, you know, there's been busyness and fear. And with this one, he brought to mind a part of a prayer that my mom used to pray over me at night. And she used to pray that I'd be a great woman of God, strong in my faith and fearless as I face the future. I pray that over my sons at night, that they'd be great men of God. And he brought to mind the phrase, great woman of God. And I thought, that's crazy. That's not a felt need of a book at all. So I just put it aside and thought, well, that's me remembering something from my childhood. And then about a month later, I was praying again. And I said, Lord, what would you like the next book to be about? Because who knows, maybe he'd say something. And in my spirit, not audibly, I felt him say, I've already told you. I thought, oh, gosh, okay, now I need to figure out what in the world this means. So I spent about six months praying into what does he have for women? What does he want women to know? What, what do we need to know as we're going into this, as I was going into this book? And what I kept coming up with was that God really cares about partnership. You know, God exists in partnership, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and that he partners with people on earth to do his will, to fulfill his purposes, whether it's clean water for a city or a backyard blueberry bush or mothers raising their children or Bible study leaders um, mentoring other women and that he had great plans for women and things that he wanted women to do, but that life was going to get difficult. Now, when I first started this journey two years ago, I couldn't have imagined how difficult things would be in 2020, you know, 2020, we're like, yeah, life is difficult. Um, and so I told my story of some things that I had been through and what God was teaching me, but really I kind of look at standing strong as a love letter to women and all of the things that God wants for women and the things he wants to do in women's lives. Okay. So let's talk specifically though, about what do you mean by the term standing strong? Because I yeah. feel like this could go so many different ways. Where is standing strong? Does that mean we get on social media? And if there's a cause that's near and dear to our hearts, we're just like, I'm going to stand so strong for this. And I'm going to just tell everybody what I think, no matter, you know, I'm not going to worry about their feelings. Like this is truth. I'm standing strong for this. Or if there's an argument with our husband and we are like, I know he's wrong that we're like, Nope, I'm going to stand <laughs> strong. I'm going to be stubborn. I'm very very good at being stubborn. Um, I'm going to stand so strong and be stubborn, or I'm imagining that's not what you mean by these things. So can you tell us a little bit, what do you mean by standing strong? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. It's funny when I first came up with the title, the publisher said, well, that sounds a little aggressive and masculine. I was like, I don't mean it that way. Trust me. I look at standing strong by standing strong in Christ because Christ is the source of our strength and our wisdom and our courage and everything good. And, and one of the drivers for me with this book is this kind of garbage notion that's all over our culture that that is kind of the antithesis to what I'm teaching, which is you are the hero of your story. You just stand up for what you want. You don't make apologies. You demand what you're going to need and you go after it. You go girl. I, I, I kind of call it like the demented girl boss movement. Right. And a lot of it sounds good because do we want men and women to do great things? Yes. Do we want people to do things that are going to help other people and expand the kingdom? Yes. But the reason it's so dangerous and the reason it's unbiblical is it because it doesn't have any place for Jesus. We're not the hero of our own story. Jesus is the hero of our own story. And I think the fruit of that message is destruction. And it's really dangerous because right now so many women, especially Christian women, are falling for it because it makes them feel good. 
And sometimes the stuff that makes us feel good will take us down a road that we never want to go on. And what does it look like to stand strong? I think a lot of it has to do with getting out of our own way. Because a lot of times we don't follow the Lord and we don't follow what he's placed in our hearts because of self-doubt. And we hold ourselves back and, and we play small thinking we're being humble when really God is calling us to get strong. And when I think of a woman standing strong, I think of, you know, a, a woman in college working two drops, uh, a woman who is sleep deprived and up rocking her baby in the middle of the night, a woman who's gone back to school to get her degree. Like those are pictures of women standing strong. I love how you mentioned specifically that um, we can let fear hold us back from all the things that God is calling us to because we feel like we're being humble. Like, oh, yeah. well, I'm nobody. I'm just this little person. So I couldn't possibly go do all of these big things. Um, that's something that I have felt a lot in my life and have like worked through mostly, still working on. Um, but <laughs> what are, can you share some more of, okay, what are the obstacles that keep us from standing strong? Yeah, just like you're saying this whole, who am I? And when we say, who am I? We're not paying attention to everything God did in the Bible. Because who did he work through in the Bible? Just people from the backwoods, middle of nowhere desert, right? And people who made mistakes, people who were failures, people who had a rough past, people who had a really rough past. Like that's what God does, not because of who we are, but because of who he is. And I think sometimes we realize that conceptually, like we'll listen to a message and the pastor will teach it. We'll go, yes, amen, pastor, I get it. But then we'll kind of have this idea in us bubble up, whether it's to foster a child or learn a second language or build a garden or write a book, whatever it is, whatever God's bringing to the surface in our lives. And we go, oh, I made some mistakes in high school. That's not for me. Or I didn't finish college. Or, uh, you know, I've got this or I've got this. And we just take ourselves out of the game before we ever get a chance to play. And I think, you know, God at this time in history, when the world is so messed up, God is calling women like, hey, ladies, I have more for you. I have big things. I have small things. I have things that people will know about. I have things that only you and I will know about. But we got to start working together because there's stuff to do. And that excites me. Yeah, I love that. And I feel like there's so much conflicting information and values in our culture where you have the voice, like you said, the demented girl boss voice, where, which I love. I'm going to get in trouble for that. <laughs> no, I love it. Where they're like, you are the hero of your story and you just go girl and you do all of these things. And it doesn't matter what God has called you to do. Like you pick and you go and you do. But then you also have the alternate version as well, where growing up in church, especially in a more traditional household, I know I grew up in the, okay, the man is the leader of the household and you are the woman and you need to know your place and you need to be a people pleaser and you need to stay small because that's what women are for. Yeah. Um, I was looking through your book some more a little bit earlier today. And you were talking about the original meaning of the word help meet in the Bible, because I know that's something where we know as Christian women, we are taught we're supposed to be the help meet. We're supposed to be like the help. Can you explain a little bit more about what that term really means? Yeah. Okay. Before I tell you, I'll tell you a funny story. So I was young wife. I didn't grow up in the church. So, you know, we're, we're going to church and I'm catching up, you know, all, all the cultural things. And I get this book on how to be a Christian wife. And it was, it was all about being a help me. So I started being like the perfect Christian wife, whatever it said to do, I do. And my husband would come home from work every day and just start picking fights with me. And we never fought. So I was like, why is he such a jerk? I don't understand what's going on. And finally, one day I said, why are you so mean to me all of a sudden? Why do you always want to fight? And he said, I don't know what happened to you. It's like invasion of the body snatchers. You're so boring and you're so vanilla what is going on? I'm just trying to get a rise out of you. And I was like, I'm trying to be a good Christian wife. And he Aww. said, I need you to stop. I need you to be the good Christian wife you were before somebody stole your personality. And I was like, oh, interesting. So in some translations of, of, of woman, of Eve in Genesis, it is help me. And help me was, I think, mistranslated into just helper. Now, are women helpers? Yes. I believe that we are, we are the completion of creation. And that we have, we were created by God as a solution to problems. That is what he has for us. That's what we do. That's his purpose. And if you look at the original Hebrew of Azer Konegdo, 
um, what people have called help me. The, the real translation of it is in opposition. And we hear opposition and we go, oh, opposition. I, what do you mean? Like, am I going to cause arguments? But if you think about an opposition being equal force holding something up, in a plane, you have two wings in opposition. On a bike, you have two wheels in opposition. You need to have two opposing forces for balance and for safety and security. That's the way the family is. So yes, God, is, uh, God has ordained that the man be the head of the family, but the female, it's not that we are under him in our worth. We have equal worth and we lean on each other. And Azer Connecto in the, same, in the same form of the word was used 21 times in scripture, 16 of those times. Um, it was God as a military defense to the nation of Israel. So there is no way, shape or form does that word for women equal weak. That word for women is strong, resilient, ready for battle. I mean, I think about, uh, I love movies. And when I first saw Wonder Woman, have you seen Wonder Woman? I have not. I fall asleep gonna, at the beginning of movies. You're going to need to see Wonder Woman because there's this, I, there's this moment in Wonder Woman where it's in World War I and she is crossing no man's land, the area between the trenches. And she's going to, and, and she has her shield up and the bullets are bouncing off of her and she's doing it to draw the fire. So the men can come out of the trenches and she can go rescue a town. And when I watched it the first time in the theater, I started crying and I was embarrassed because like, who cries at an action movie? I do. But I had this moment of realizing that's what we do as women every day in our families, in the world. We take the bullets. We take the fire to protect our families. Like women are strong. This is what women do. And um, I got on Twitter and I was reading things and I would see like hundreds over the next week of women going, did anybody else cry in Wonder Woman? And I mean, it's a, it's a silly, a wonderful movie, but I think that there's this, there's this thing rising up in women that we are created for so much that we are stronger that we know, than we know that God has given us tremendous strength. I mean, someone was talking to me the other day and she said, well, you mentioned all of the women in the Bible and how strong they are. Who do you think is a picture of a woman standing strong? And what came to me is the woman with the issue of blood. Because I imagine how she had been so mistreated her whole life. She had, she had been an outcast. People had been so cruel to her. And she used all the strength she had in her to get to touch the hem of his robe. And I think that is a picture of strength. No matter how life kicks us around, no matter what happens, that we keep reaching out to Jesus and he is going to be the one to save us and to protect us and give us strength for, for the season in the future. And that gets me excited. Yeah. I absolutely love in your book. I knew before that Azer meant like a helper and that God did it as well, but I didn't realize that there was in reference to him so many times. And that just shows like, it can't possibly mean, Oh, just like a helper. Like if God comes alongside us to help us and support us, and we get to do that too for our families, yeah. that's just so exciting. And I love how your book, how you don't just say, you know, go girl power, like go do all the things, but it's definitely like standing strong in what God has called you and equipped you to do and being that woman. And I just love that. But that leads me right into my next question, which I know people are going to want to know is, okay, so if we're supposed to stand strong in what God has planned for us, how do we know what God has planned for us? <laughs> That's the magic question. <laughs> well, here's how it works in my life. Um, when there is something in the future that God is, wants me to do, or he's, he's putting me in a different season of life, it's a very gentle wooing. You know, it's not like Allie, here's what's next and do this. And in five years, this is going to happen. In 10 years, this is going to happen. It's more of a, an idea that bubbles up. I put the idea on the shelf. It bubbles up again. Um, doors start getting opened. He gives me more ideas and I start just kind of baby stepping going, okay, I feel like there's a thread here and I'm going to pull the thread and see what happens. That's how generally he leads me into the future. But when I'm doing something he doesn't want me to do, or I'm doing something that he wanted me to do for a certain season and then stop, that's when he gets loud. That's when, you know, when I pray, he'll say it's time to quit or it's time to leave or don't do this, get back on track. 
And I think sometimes we think of God as kind of like a cosmic college football coach and he's on the sideline and he's calling plays, but we can't tell what the plays are because he has a, a, a folder in front of his face. Like it's not God. I think God is gentle and he invites us into partnership and he invites us into what's next. And it's really a mystery every step of the way. It's going to be a mystery the whole time until we get to a certain place and look back and go, well, sure enough, look at what he did. Um, but it's when we go off track, if we're sensitive to the Holy Spirit, that he gets really loud and says, you don't need to do this. Um, but the thing about the, the concept of figuring out what's next for us is he always has something new. One of the main kind of ideas he gave me for this book is that our purpose is singular. Our purpose is to choose him or not. And if we choose him, we tell the world about him and we live for him. But our calling is different in every season. So our calling when we are young women, um, our calling when we are in our 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s is always something new and different. Like that's the nature of God. But sometimes we have this idea that, well, this is my life now and this is how it's always going to be. But he has new adventures waiting for us. and it's up to us to not hold ourselves back. It's up to us to not go, well, this is all I've ever known. This is what's going to be. When God is in the business of restarts and resurrecting things that we thought was long dead, um, I think if we just stay open to him and we go, Lord, I don't know what you're doing, but I'm going to obey you every step of the way. I'm going to stay open to it. I'm going to make sure that I keep growing, that those doors are swung wide open to whatever God wants to do in our lives. I've seen the same thing in my life as well, where I have had whispers for like years of like, hey, and it's never like you will do this and here's your plan. But it's like just this idea that bubbles up like, oh, what if you did this? Like, that would be so much fun. Or what if you did this? Like, that would be so exciting. And I kind of like, you know, it's not the season to do all of the like huge things right now. Um, but I feel like that's part of God's working too, because if it was like right then, okay, Allie, I want you to go do this big thing right now. You'd be like, um, how? Like, no, <laughs> I can't do that. But if it is something that he has laid on your heart for years, like, hey, someday, like, what if you did that? It just gives you that time to prepare. Um, and I just feel like it's such an exciting adventure to follow those threads to see, okay, what does he have next? Like, what could the next thing be? Um, and that's so exciting to me. Um, I'm getting off track here. No, but, I love it. I love it. Um, the next thing I wanted to ask you is, what do you do if you sense that God is really calling you towards something and you're like, okay, I know which direction I'm going to walk. I feel confident, but the people around you don't agree. Maybe you have a husband who is like, I don't know if this is best for our family, your best friend doesn't agree, or your mother-in-law is like, you should be doing this other thing. Um, how do you deal with other people in your life not being supportive? Yeah, I, I worry less when it's friends. I worry more when it's close family. I worry the most if it's husband. That I went through that a couple of years ago where I was uh, running Propel Women with Chris Kane and you know thought it was the dream job. Everything was great. And God tells me out of the blue, quit you're done, leave, this season's over. I didn't want to obey, but I knew that I knew that I knew that I heard from him. And my husband at first didn't agree. And he said, but God didn't tell you when. So let's just wait until God tells us when, because we had come out of a season where he was really sick. He almost died from an illness. And he was like, we're, we're okay now. Let's just have a little time of calm and let's just wait until God tells you when. And I got a lot of interesting advice in that season. There were some people who said, absolutely, you know, you can't go against your husband's will. You want to, you want to make sure that you're in agreement. And then I had other people who were like, listen, God told you to go, you better go and you deal with the fallout of your husband later. But I knew my husband loves the Lord. I knew my husband hears from the Lord and it may take longer than I wanted it to, but that he would hear and that we would be in agreement if it was God's will, because God is not going to tell someone um, and, and a married couple where both people love the Lord and hear from the Lord to do one thing without bringing the other person along. So it took a little while, um, but he came along. I think my advice is if you're hearing something and you think it's really clear from the Lord, but your spouse doesn't agree, that it's important to wait until your spouse agrees, because I think God will honor that. Um, if, it's, if it's a parent, you also want to pray into it, but it's not as important as your spouse. If it's a friend, some friends are wise. Some friends aren't wise. We just have to weigh that in, in prayer. Yeah, that's great mm -hmm. advice. Okay, I want to ask you 
on the opposite idea of that. So what if you're not confident and you're like, okay, I don't really know where to go. Do you have any advice for a girl who's like, okay, I want to stand strong. I want to follow God. I legit have no idea where to start. Mm, That's a great question. First, I want to say, if you don't have any confidence, if you feel like you're not up for the job, whatever it is, if you feel like the whole world's against you, don't feel like that is an indication that you're not supposed to do it. That's just an indication that you're actually growing. Nobody feels comfortable going from A to B. And sometimes we think if we aren't comfortable, that it's like the Holy Spirit saying, you don't have peace about this, don't do it. When really it's just natural resistance anytime we try to do something new. Now, when God first called me to build my first business, we were in the middle. We had gone through bankruptcy. We were homeless living with my grandfather. This is about 12, almost 13 years ago now. And where did I start? I literally started by us driving to a McDonald's Playland every day. The kids would play. My husband would apply for new jobs. And I would Google, how do you start a business on the internet? Not, a, not the most strategic move, but it was all I knew. And I think that's kind of the the vision here every day put one step in front of the other if you have visions for things if you have an idea if you're like i think god wants me to do this start googling it i like to say with god and google we're unstoppable so he will open every door every step of the way but we just have to get going even if we get going and it's messy and we don't know what we're doing i like to say that god will get us across the finish line but he expects us to lace up our shoes and just start walking And another thing that I've noticed as well is that oftentimes doors don't open until we start walking. Like, for example, I never like had some career plan that I was going to have a podcast or anything else I do. I never was like, okay, here's the five-step plan for how I'm going to do this. Instead, I just started blogging because, hey, why not? It's a fun hobby. Let's just try it out. And then as I started doing things then, oh, well, now I could try this thing or, oh, now I could try this thing that I never would have even known to pursue before. But the more that I just started trying things, it opened up new doors and opportunities. Can you imagine if way back when God was like, Brittany, here's the plan. This is everything you're going to do. You would have been like, no, that's, I can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I had the opportunity when I went to college, I could have gone for writing. I could have gone for communications. I could have gone for business or any of these number of things. And I didn't do any of those things. I went for education, which I still use, but I didn't have a plan. I didn't have this design. I just walked and we figured it out along the way. And I'm loving every minute of it. Yeah, what he does, it's just like a child learning to walk. They build strength. You know, you start with tummy time and they hate it. And I'm always like, can I afford the therapy bills from this child doing tummy time? You know, it's tummy time and then you build core strength and then they learn to walk slowly. It's difficult, but they're building strength. And by the time they're walkers, they're good walkers and they're strong in it. Same in our lives. Every little thing we do builds strength, even though it doesn't make sense to us along the way, but it's like, God is watching us going, okay, we're just building a little strength here. And soon, soon you're going to be walking in this gift and this season that I have for you. You can't see all the steps, but you're perfectly in line with where I want you to go. And I was having a conversation with somebody on Instagram the other day where I was saying 2020 has just been for the birds. It has been a dumpster fire. It has been just like, I'm over here. Like I need to check my attitude about this year. Cause I am so over it at this point. <laughs> but I was having this conversation on Instagram where I was like, you know what? My marriage is stronger than it's ever been. My parenting is better than it's ever been. My work, there's things that need work, but like we are making progress and all of these things even in the year that is the year of all years, like there are still good things happening. So just keeping an eye on that, even if things look bad, God can still use the bad situations for his good. So good. There's, uh, for us, I like to say that there's blessings even in the midst of the storm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, before we wrap up today, is there anything else that you didn't have a chance to say that you would just love to share with our listeners today? Yeah, I think it's a challenge. And that is, I hope that we will stop telling God no. Now, I know some of us don't tell God no with our mouths. We don't realize we're telling God no. But when we hold ourselves back, when God tells us, you know, I have a book for you to write or a children's book or a garden to grow or, or I want you to foster a child, whatever it is, it's individual for every woman. Um, when we hold ourselves back from, from going, okay, Lord, I don't know what this is about, but I'm just, I'm going to follow that nudge. We are telling him no. 
And we normally tell him no through our actions because of self-doubt, because of the lies of the enemy. And it, we need to be women. We need to be strong women who kind of make the, make the deal with ourselves in our head. I'm not going to tell myself no. I'm not going to tell God no with my words. I'm not going to tell him no with, with my actions. And whenever I'm thinking about making a decision, like if I have an idea for something and I, I go, ah, I'm not, I'm not the girl who can do that. I'm not smart enough. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have enough resources to do that. I ask this question. If I hold myself back, will it make God happy or will it make the enemy happy? Because the enemy is so happy when women hold themselves back. The enemy is so happy when women who God has given us gifts and talents and special ability to do something go, oh, I'm just going to hide here in the corner. And what we do is I think sometimes we, we call it humility, but really it's based in self-doubt. And if we kind of filter all of our decision-making through, is this going to make God happy or is this going to make the enemy happy? It's going to be a game changer for us as women of God. That is exactly the question that I had to ask myself a few years ago when I was like, I feel like God is calling me to this big thing, but you know, who am I? I can't go do this. And I was just like, you know what, what if he really is? And what if the enemy is the one who's saying you can't do this? Yeah. Like, you know, even if I'm wrong, let's try it out. Like, let's do it. Let's go. What harm it. is it? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'm so excited for people to read your book. I have a copy right here. Yay. Um, tell us where can they go to learn more and get your book? Oh yeah. Uh, my website, allyworthington.com and Standing Strong is available everywhere. All right. Well, thank you so much, Allie, for coming on the podcast today. I have loved talking with you. Thanks for having me. This has been fun. All right. So that just about does it for today's episode. If you would like to hear more from Allie, especially about her brand new book, Standing Strong, A Woman's Guide to Overcoming Adversity and Living with Confidence, I would definitely encourage you to check out her website, AllieWorthington.com, where you can find all of the information there. And as always, if you have not subscribed to the Equipping Godly Women podcast yet, what are you waiting for? We come back here all of the time to challenge, encourage, and equip you with inspiring interviews and tons of super practical tips to help you be all in in faith and family. So I really hope you will subscribe if you haven't already, and I will talk to you again real soon. All right. Bye.